This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's up? This is John from John Brentsford Photography, and today you're going to be hanging out with me at a wedding in Greensboro, North Carolina at the Proximity Hotel. This wedding was on leap day this year, so February 29th. It's a 10 hour day and I'll be using my Fuji gear as usual. If you're new to the channel and want to learn more about using Fujifilm cameras for wedding photography, you found the right place. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out all my videos on me using Fujifilm cameras at weddings. I actually have a playlist of other full wedding days that you can check out right up above. This day I'm going to be using my standard gear, the 23 F2, the 35 F2, the 56 1.2, and the 16 2.8 for my wide shots. I also brought along an extension tube for any macro shots I need, and then two flashes and flash modifiers. For anyone who wants to learn more about this wedding day, make sure to check out my Patreon page where I'm gonna be sharing the full gallery of the wedding day for you to view all the photos, as well as break down some of the portions of the day just a little bit further for you all on Patreon. So let's go ahead and get into this day. Photographer. Hello, everyone dressed? Uh, maybe I should check. Dressed enough? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the start of the wedding day and I show up about an hour early. As you just heard, for all of you male photographers, make sure you don't just barge in the room when you show up. Make sure to check that everyone is dressed so you don't end up becoming the creepy photographer. I like to show up early so I can get a head start on all the bride's details as well as get a look at the room and get an idea of where I'd like to take photos of her when she gets in her dress. So when I first show up, I greet the bride, meet her bridesmaids, meet her mother, and then get a quick look at the room, figure out where my light is, figure out how much space I have, and figure out where I can put her when she puts her dress on. Once I've gotten the lay of the land, then I start on the details. For my flat lays, I always talk to my bride before the wedding and let her know what details I want her to gather up for me so that when I show up, I'm not hunting down for different details. So one quick tip, having two invitations helps because you can use the front and the back of the invitation to fill out your flat lay. So while I'm looking at all the details, I'm also asking if she has another invitation for me. So here is our second invitation and we're ready to start our flat lay. A couple of tips for making flat lays. First off, you want to find a well lit area. As you saw, this hotel room has lots of nice big windows, so we're all good to go on light. Second off, you want to find a nice flat surface that also looks nice and complements the invitations of your couple. You can see here, this is a marble table in the hotel room and it looks really, really good and it fits extremely well with the flat lay. It was basically the first thing I saw when I showed up to the hotel room and I knew the flat lay was gonna happen there. So our invitation suite is always gonna be the center of the flat lay. It's typically the biggest piece and it really sets the tone for everything else around it. So I always use the invitation as the centerpiece of my flat lays. You can see here I was having trouble with the card and I wanted it to lay flat, so what I ended up doing was actually getting some tape, which the maid of honor, her sister, came in extra clutch and had double-sided tape and bobby pins and everything you could ever dream of. So it really helped out with this flat lay. After I've gotten my centerpiece in place, then I start laying out the rest of the details around the centerpiece. Typically you have things like perfume, shoes, maybe some ribbon, the rings, and any other flower details if the wedding has some. And basically the main thing I'm looking for with my flat lay is to keep the weight of the scene looking fairly equal. I want a centerpiece with the main invitation and then everything around it keeping the weight fairly even. Things don't have to line up perfectly. I actually prefer things misaligned 
but at least keeping the weight nearly the same helps. And so I've heard before that some photographers don't really like to focus on the details and or they think it's a waste of time and they're not going to be able to get nice candidates of everyone hanging out together. But if you have a couple who really does want some detail shots, make sure you put some effort into that stuff. Like you see with most of my wedding days, I show up about an hour early. That way, when I'm doing the flat lay in details, there's really not that much going on. I wasn't even supposed to be there yet. So no one's expecting me, no one's ready to even be in photos at all, and I can do the details real quick and also save myself some time later on in the day. And the last tip I have for you all is don't be afraid to practice and try different things in your flat lays. It took me years to get where my flat lays are today, and it just came from practicing at home and in styled shoots. Try something new, try something different, and find your own style of how you like to handle flat lays. So we're just about done with our flat lay. I have everything lined up the way I want it, and I'm just putting in the final touches now. Typically the last thing to go on my flat lay will be the jewelry, especially the rings. I usually let my bride know before the wedding day to have both of the rings together with her in the morning so that I can go ahead and take the ring shot with the flat lay. And once that's all set up, I'm ready to start shooting. Typically I start out with my wide shot with the 23 F2. Keep in mind if you have enough light for your flat lays, you're gonna wanna stop down just a little bit. So maybe to 2.8 or 3.2. After I've taken my wide shot, I switch to the 35 F2 for close-ups. Make sure to get both horizontal and vertical photos of every detail in your flat lay. This gives you more content to submit to blogs and also more photos to give to your couple. As a wedding photographer, make sure to always be aware of your surroundings. While I was taking my flat lay photos, the bride was doing her makeup and I forgot she's a makeup artist. So while I saw her there, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get some cute candidates of her doing her own makeup. Never get so focused on one single thing that you miss what's happening around you. As a wedding photographer, you basically have to have spidey sense of everything that's going on around you at all times. Now back to my flat lay. To finish up, I'm going to take a nice macro shot of the rings. For this, I'm going to use an extension tube with my 56 f1.2. This way I don't have to have an extra specifically macro lens, and I can just use the things that I already have on me. When using the setup with the 56, I found you have to stop way down to about f5. Make sure you have enough light in the area and or just come up on your ISO a bit to help you make these shots.
Now it's time to officially start the day with the groom prep photos. Hello, hello. Hey. I'm back. I'm back. So like with the bride, I always start with a flat lay. Typically, the groom's flat lay is not as detailed, but this groom had a lot of details, which is super awesome. Because I'm not using invitations in this, it's an easier flat lay with typically all the details, maybe some jewelry or a watch, and the shoes. Once I have everything set up, I go ahead and start out with my 23F2 for a nice wide shot. Again, don't forget to stop down. Once I've gotten the wide shot out of the way, then we go in and use the 35F2 for our close ups. Again, take horizontal and verticals of each and every detail. So the groom's room did not have as much space as the bridal suite. So I wanted to see how things are going to look on these different walls that I have access to. If you ever need to, it's a good idea to either take a test shot or just look through your viewfinder to see what you're going to have before you start shooting it. Don't just show up and start taking pictures of random whateverness. Line up your shots. I know I talk a lot about how I shoot candid, but it's like a controlled candid. I want to set up my subject where I want them, where I know it's going to look good, and then let them interact with the area and my direction. So I end up choosing this wall and I move some of the background out of the way for a cleaner shot. So basically, and yet again, this goes for everybody too. I mainly shoot candid, so you don't have to like stop and like, like, yeah. Hey. Right. Um, most of the time I just want you to do stuff. So if you yeah. see me roll up on you, don't go, <laughs> um, y'all can give me some of those if you want yeah. to, but for the most part, I want y'all to just be natural. Unless I'm asking you to look at the camera, don't worry about it. So that goes for you as well, Markel. Just kind of hang out and chill. Um, while we're here, your light's coming from this way. So if you do turn your head, try and turn it that way, exactly. And you're wearing this first. Yeah. Now that we've gotten our direction speech out of the way and the groomsmen know exactly what I want from them, we start getting the groom dressed. Basically for this, I hand him one piece of clothing and then have him put it on naturally. I don't like him to stop and pose for me. He just puts it on normally and I take photos of him while he's doing that. My 23F2 is gonna be taking the main shots, a nice wide shot of what he's doing. With my whole fast moneymaker, it's easy to switch between each focal length quickly, even though I'm using prime lenses. Having two camera bodies on me at all times really, really is awesome for wedding days. Don't forget to remind your groom to take his time while he's getting dressed. Some guys I've seen get dressed in less than like two minutes and it gives me no time to take photos. So while I want him to just naturally put on his clothes, I also tell him to take his time. Don't rush it. Let's just put the clothes on nice and calm. Nobody rush and we get nice photos. If I do need anything from him like a smile or to stop for a moment, I just let him know real quick and grab the shot and then have him continue getting dressed. Shoes are typically gonna be the last thing I have the groom put on before his jacket. Also, yet again, let them know to take their time. As you see here, this groom is wearing loafers, so obviously he's just slipping his feet in there. So I had him do it a couple times to make sure I got all the shots and the close-ups that I needed.
It's not often that I get grooms who are wearing jewelry, so this was really nice to have some earrings in there. So for his earring shots, the main shots I want to take is when he turns his face towards the window. It's going to be nice lighting on his face coming from the side. And last but not least is his jacket. Typically I'll have him button the jacket up a couple of times. This way I can get some close ups and also some action of him buttoning up his jacket. Once the jacket's on, this is where you can get a couple of nice shots of him just hanging out, a good smile, just something nice facing forward. Typical photo. So his father-in-law came and did his boot in there. Obviously I'm going to want some photos of that. Any kind of interaction you can get with a father, a mother, a brother, the best man, make sure you set that stuff up and get nice photos of it. Also make sure to make them hug or handshake or something of that sort. A lot of times, you know, guys don't want to be touchy-feely, but make them show some emotion. It'll make for better photos, and in the end, everyone will be more happy with those photos. So before we head out for the groomsmen portraits, typically groomsmen will do a shot or either groomsmen gifts. So here we're doing gifts. Yet again, I want them to be natural with each other, so all I did here was set them up in a semicircle in front of the window so I know that they're going to be lit well. Then I had them go ahead and pass out the gift and just interact with each other. For group shots like this, I typically use my 16F 2.8. This way I can get a nice wide shot and include most of the guys in the photo. And then if I need any close-ups, I switch over to my 35 F2. Cool, so we're just gonna kind of chill. Also, it's cold, so. What's 2020, John? Yeah, I'm stuck in the past. See, I'm That's not, right. You can't listen to this guy even know what he's talking about. Come up just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he's behind the times, don't listen to him. No, top button's good. Yeah, that works. You guys, oh no, you're fine. Y'all scoot in just a little bit. And then turn out towards me just a tad. There it is, there it is, there it is. I'm gonna come back just a little bit. So it's groomsmen portrait time. If you're able to do the bridal party in separate groups, make sure to do that because it saves you a lot of time later on in your day. So for this shot, I'm gonna use a wider lens. I'm using the 23 F2. Stop it down just a little bit again to F2.8 or 3.2. This way you can get everyone in focus. So what are y'all, y'all silly guys, stupid guys? You wanna do something stupid? You wanna do something fun? Yeah, y'all can go ahead. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all pick what you wanna do, anything. Three. You ready? No thought, just do it. Three, two, one. Um, let's, um, let's come out here real quick. Y'all hang out right here. <laughs> and if you could for me, I'm gonna have y'all just kind of post up like you're chilling. You need to put your hands on the front. You can act like you're adjusting something. Just look cool. Y'all can look off to the side or something. Just be like. That's perfect. 
Let's do solos with Markel real quick. That's each one of you guys separately. Whoever wants to go first is fine. And let's actually start kind of right where you are, Markel. That's fine. All the rest of you guys, come step back this way. <laughs> Just do a solo, so each one separately, yep. And then scoot over to your right, right there. Come, come back, right there, and then close it up. There it is, perfect. <laughs> Whatever's comfortable, but the, the rule for today for you is if you ever two arms up, you're gonna get pullage, so then unbutton it. Okay. If you're just one arm, that's fine, but it's the moment you start doing this, it's gonna get weird. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, and then throw your other hand in your pocket. After you finish up doing your group shots, make sure to get solos of each of the groomsmen with the groom. These are gonna be nice memories down the road. They may not wanna do it, but definitely make them do it. And it's something that you can do very quickly. Take a horizontal and a vertical shot with each guy. And if they want to, let them do something funny or silly as well. You know it, you know it. Get him walking up. Yeah. Oh, we need the video on this. Hey. All right, so the rules for today is I shoot mainly candid. So don't worry about being perfect. You already look that way. Um, so for the most part, have a fun time. Every now and then I'll ask you to look at the camera, but for the most part, I want y'all interacting with each other. Okay. Oh, oh, that mess is all up in the shot. If your bride has special robes or outfits for her bridesmaids at the start of the day, make sure you plan out the day so that you have time to get those photos before everyone gets dressed. Basically, after I finished up with the groomsmen, I was able to get the shot real quick and then leave the room while they all got dressed. Again, make sure you focus on all the details in the room. All those bags and random mess were gonna be in the back of my shot, so I had to go ahead and move them out of the way. Uh, actually, uh, you four scoot over just a little bit. Yeah. That's so funny. There it is, perfect. Awesome, so everyone right at the camera, nice big smiles. And then look at each other. And then if you can, everyone try and hug Michaela. Nice tight group hug. Yes. And then just look at each other while you're hugging. <laughs> so now it's time to take a shot of the dress. Generally, I do not like to hang my dresses in front of windows, but this was the best option in this room. The reason I don't like to hang it in front of the window, outside of it being very cliche, people have been doing it for years, you're basically fighting the light. You have a white dress in front of a window, so getting a nice shot is hard, especially if you're using natural light. I made a video on how to get epic dress shots, make sure to check that out at the link above. So I love nice wide pictures for the dress shot. So you can see here, we're cleaning up the area to make sure that there's no mess in the back of the photo. Once we've gone ahead and cleaned up the area, then we can go ahead and start shooting the dress. Because I didn't have a lot of space, I start out with my 16 f2.8. After that, I take multiple close shots with a 35 f2. Basically getting the details of the dress, if there's a nice hanger, get the hanger, 
get the belt, and just a bunch of different close-ups. So after we get all the detail shots we need of the dress, then I have the bride go ahead and get into her dress. At this point I've already told the mother of the bride as well to get dressed because I need her in the photos of the bride putting her dress on. Now it's time for the bride to get in her dress. Typically I'll tell her to get in the dress and not to button it all the way up, just a couple of buttons back to the lower mid back. This way I can get photos of her mother or maid of honor actually buttoning up the dress. I don't want any fake posing photos. I want them to actually have to button the dress. And then again, because this is all candid and natural, you don't have to stop or anything. You just go ahead and button it up for real. So I position them in front of a nice wall where I have the window off to the side. You see here from my perspective, the window is off to our right. This way I have nice light on the bride and also some nice light on her mother. I'll typically take most of the shots with the 23 F2 to get a nice, wide, symmetrical shot. Then any of the close-ups, I'll follow up with the 35 F2. I really love a good back of the dress getting buttoned in black and white, and I always take those with the 35 F2. While they're getting buttoned up, I do give them a little bit of direction. I let them know to smile at each other, maybe to look back, and your bride's not actually going to be able to see her mom, but just looking back makes for a great photo. Just joke with them, let them stay in their feels, and talk with them through it. When they're done with the buttons, I have them turn around and get a nice hug. If they do start getting emotional or having a little fun with it, just let it happen and capture the moment. Remember, do not rush them, even if there's not a lot of time in the day. Sometimes the day can fall behind just a little bit, but you want these moments. They're the most important. After the dress is on and it's all buttoned up, then I have the bride put on her jewelry. Typically that's gonna be your earrings, necklace, and bracelet. For the necklace and bracelet, you can have someone else put those on, but generally for the photos, it looks better if she's putting on her own earrings. This time around, we only had earrings for the jewelry. So let's, um, we could have, let's, kind of, let's do everyone in the shot this time. So have someone like back on this end. Yeah, y'all could just hype her up. If you could for me, just scoot like over that way a bit. Yeah, so I can, yes, exactly. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, and just primp her up. Make it look perfect. And just take your time with the shoes. Let's do one at a time for the shoes, yeah. So if you can include the bridesmaids in the bride getting ready, do so. Get as many as possible because these are some of her closest friends. You can see here, I had everyone come and help with her putting on the shoes, and I was able to get everyone in the scene with the 16 F2.8. And again, I'm getting all my close-up shots with the 35 F2. Just let them have fun, take some photos, and then after we're done getting dressed, we head out for the bridesmaids photos. So it was pretty cold this day, it's still February, but at the end of the day, photos outside are gonna be the best. So we did go outside for these photos and everyone braved the cold. A question I often get is how do I keep the bride and groom from seeing each other before they're supposed to? And generally, I know where the guys are for the day and I let him know where I'm gonna be for portraits with the bride and bridesmaids. That way, we do not run into each other. Turn in towards Michaela. I'm so sorry. The pictures will be nice though. <laughs> It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. At least we're not Michaela, do you want to be facing that way a little? Or do you want to be more straight? Because if you do want to swap that way, I would just move you over. You sure? Do you, I mean, do you like that side better? I mean, this is my... I like yeah, so swap, swap, swap like with it. Yeah, because 
this side is gonna be going in this way. And so that'll, oh no, and yeah, that's right, yeah, I'm gonna scoot in here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you all will be facing in this way, and then you three oh, wait, will be facing this way. There we go. Um, and then we're gonna, I'm so sorry, move to the right, just a tad, so everyone scoot in. Yep. So three on this end, face in this way. Yeah. Yep. There it is. So try to match bouquets. I know Michaela's the shortest, so y'all come down to her. Michaela, come up just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so try and keep the bouquets around the same level. Um, since we got taller-ish on the end, yeah, y'all can come up, just come up just a little bit. So we'll have it like, so at least then it looks even. Yeah, except just y'all bring your bouquets over. So, and yeah, get nice and tight, it'll keep you warm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, beautiful. Eyes at me, big smile. There's a couple more. Remember, look at my camera. No others. I'm jealous. Only me. So I generally take the bridesmaids photo with the 35 F2. This gives me a bit of background separation. Everyone pick a girl. Laugh in her face. Ha! Ha ha! Now get nice and tight. Warm each other up. There it is. Get even tighter, like all the way in there. There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's get a little bit of attitude. So generally for my group photos, I usually do a standard nice smiling at the camera, then something kind of cutie where they're all close together and smiling at each other. And then last but not least, I'll do something that I like to call Vanity Fair or just very magazine editorial-ish where I have everyone posing with kind of straight faces and trying to look like models. There it is. So we're gonna start out with straight faces. Excuse me, y'all, let's slide in here. Oh, like think like Vogue magazine or something. Yeah, McKay McKay McKay's already there. She knows. Bam! <laughs> oh yeah. And then I'll smile at the camera. After we finish our group shots, then it's off to the solos with the bride. Yet again, take each photo horizontal and vertical, and then ask them if they want to do something fun together or something cute. That lends for a lot of awesome photos. Yeah, let me just get one picture of you and Michaela real quick. Um, could you just come over here? So a huge tip for you all, if you have time to take solo portraits of your bride, take them. Even if you've already taken some, always take solo portraits of the bride when you have a chance. Because if the weather turns bad or you lose your lighting or anything happens, at least you have these solo portraits of the bride. Seriously, if you have a moment, go ahead and take them. So I took these quick safety shots, but I do know that I'm going to be taking shots of her later on in the day during our portrait section. All right, so we have the groom dressed, the bride dressed, we have groomsmen photos, bridesmaids photos. Now it's time for the first look. There's generally two ways that your wedding days can go, either traditional where the couple are seeing each other for the first time at the ceremony, or non-traditional where you do things like a first look. First looks are great for wedding days because they give you a whole bunch of extra time to take portraits with your couples. I highly recommend them, but obviously pass it by your couples first. It's not something that you wanna force on them, just suggest it and see if they're into it. Generally with the first look, I go grab the groom first and set him up, and then I'll have the bride come to him and him turn around to see her. So let's go ahead and get into that. Thank you. So you just hang out where you are. She's gonna come and like touch you on the shoulder or something. When she touches you, then you turn around. When you turn, turn this way. Yep, turn to your right. Yeah. 
Um, obviously, forget about us. Don't worry about us at all. But <laughs> have your moment. So after I've set up the groom, I give him direction on what I want for him for the photos. This way, I can have my second photographer take her nice, symmetrical wide shot, and then I can get the close-ups. You're in a good position here, but don't try and look into the windows. Just kind of keep facing that wall, and I'm going to go grab her. So right now, my second photographer is set up by the groom, and I'm leading the bride over to the groom for their first look. I'll typically take a couple of shots while she's approaching as well. It's a fun moment, little smiles, kind of some nervousness. Then once she's ready, I let her know to walk up, and I switch over to my 56 f1.2. For me, focusing on the groom is going to be the main point. I want to get his reaction and how he first looks at her. And then my second photographer is getting the safety shot of both of them together when he turns around. So here are the shots from the second photographer. She's also using Fujifilm and she was shooting with the 23 f1.4. And then here are my shots with the 56. Let your couple have this moment. Don't try to direct them too much. Just let them enjoy each other and you can take shots while that's happening. Just kind of stay like a fly on the wall in the background and give them maybe like five minutes or so. Also, if you have any friends or family around, make sure to keep an eye on the area. You can see here, her sister was totally in her fields and I was able to grab those shots. Now that we're all done with the first look, it's time for some couple portraits. So yet again, if you have a first look day, this is a great chance for you to get some portraits of the couple together before your ceremony. That way, when the cocktail hour comes around, you're not stressed trying to get family, bridal party, and couple portraits in just one hour. I can take 15, 20 minutes of photos now before the ceremony, and then when cocktail hour comes up after the ceremony, maybe another 10 to 15 minutes of couple portraits. For my portrait time, I'm generally trying to find a couple of nice areas that are close by that won't have the bride out in the open for all the guests to see once they start arriving. I generally will stick to my 23 F2 and my 35 F2 for these shots, but the 56 does come out every now and then. As far as how I'm choosing locations, first and foremost it's going to be lighting, and then after that I'm going to look for the background. Keep in mind with photography, taking things out of context is kind of our job. It doesn't have to be the most perfect place to take a photo. As you see here, there's kind of this weird wonky door behind them, but what I'm really focusing on is kind of that greenery behind them. The door does show up in a couple of the shots, but I don't think it's anything that will ruin the shot altogether. Also, make sure you're not spending too much time at different locations if you do want to get a couple of different looks. Go to one location, hit a couple of poses, have them interact with each other, and then move on to the next location. So unfortunately, this wasn't the best lighting, but it was all I had to work with. Basically, there are windows behind me and they're reflecting the sun. And especially when you have couples with different skin tones, you can see here one of them is lit more and one isn't. So that's not the best option in the world. I was able to fix most of it in post, but if I could have chosen somewhere else to shoot at, I would have.
for walking shots, you want to change your camera to zone focusing and continuous focusing. Point the larger square at them and use back button focusing to be able to continuously focus on them while they walk towards you. This way you don't really have to worry about the focus. You know everything's basically in focus because you're using continuous focus and you're right there on them. For these shots, I use the 16 f 2.8. Now we're going to set up for a Brenizer shot. If you're not familiar with Brenizers, it's basically taking multiple photos with a telephoto lens and then merging them in Lightroom as a panorama to get a larger, wider photo, but also have the depth of field of a telephoto lens. A tip for your Brenizer shots is you want something that has some type of depth of field to it. You want foreground bokeh and also background bokeh. You don't just want something that's very flat, then there's not really a whole point to the Brenizer method. For this, I'm going to use my 56 f1.2. You see here I'm taking multiple shots. My hand over the lens is because I don't have the lens hood and I'm just being lazy. I was getting glare in the photos and if you know the 56 f1.2, the lens flare in it looks actually really bad. Here's the final shot I got from the Brenizer. And keep in mind, because it's multiple shots, I can crop it however I want to. So I usually end the first look and portraits with about 15 minutes until the ceremony. This way the couple gets a second to chill before their big moment. Also, if you love the video so far, don't forget to hit that like, and also make sure to check out this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help you continue learning and grow your creativity. They have classes ranging from photo, video, arts and craft, drawing, and even music. Classes can range from pro to beginner level, so there's something for everyone on there. And the best thing is it's less than $10 a month for all of those classes. I've been using Skillshare for quite a while now, and I've been using it for photo, video, and also my first love, drawing. If you're new to photography and wedding photography, I have a couple of suggestions of classes you can take to start learning. To start out, the Fundamentals of Photography with Justin Bridges is a great place to start if you're very new to your camera and taking photos. In this class, Justin goes over everything from the very basics of understanding shutter speed, ISO, and all the other things of light in your camera. This is definitely a class you're gonna wanna take if you're very brand new to photography. And another class that I've absolutely loved is street photography with Craig Whitehead. Now, one thing I did when I first started wedding photography was actually practice by doing street photography. One thing that's very similar with wedding photography and street photography is capturing candid moments and knowing that those moments are about to happen. In this class with Craig Whitehead, he really, really goes over this very well, and I think it's something great to practice before you really get into wedding photography. So definitely check out those two classes. The first 500 people to use the link in the description below get two free months of a premium membership. It's definitely something you wanna check out. Now let's go ahead and get into the ceremony. So 15 minutes or so before the ceremony, basically before anybody shows up, I start taking detail shots of the ceremony area. First, I start out with a nice wide shot of the ceremony area. And then I'll pull in closer for a close-up shot. After that, I just take any shots of details around. Keep in mind, your florists are probably decorating this area, and you want to have nice photos for them to have as well. You can see here they had a violin player, so I took some photos of him as well. So now we're at the start of the ceremony. Typically, I'll stay right up front in the center to get shots of everyone processing in. This ceremony was a little bit challenging because I had the worst lighting ever. 
Even though that they had shades on the windows, the sun is coming right through in only one particular spot. You can see it kind of cutting through at a weird angle and everyone's gonna walk in shadow and then into that light. So I had to adjust and deal with that. So you can see here when the groom starts coming down, at first I take a natural light photo based on exposing for the shadows, but it left all the guests and everybody totally overexposed. So I ended up choosing to expose for the light coming through the window and just have all the guests kind of underexposed. I ended up doing this for the rest of all the guests processing in. Also, if I'm allowed to stay up at the front of the ceremony area, I will. This way I can get shots of the parents hugging the bride or groom. You can see here I got a couple of shots. One was a little bit blurry, but honestly, the moments matter more than if I miss the focus a little bit. And also my second photographer came in in the clutch and got a nice shot as well. After the groom comes in, basically I follow the same steps. Come to the center, take the shots of the next couple processing in, and then move out of the way. And do that over and over for everyone until we get up to the bride processing in. For my second photographer, I'll typically have them set either on the left or right side of the ceremony area up towards the front. They're going to be focusing on the groom and his reaction. That's all I want them to take photos of. I'll take a nice safety shot real quick before the bride starts coming down the aisle, but I mainly focus on the bride while she comes down the aisle, and my second photographer will get the groom and his reactions. You can see here my second photographer got amazing shots. This is exactly what I want. Nice close-ups of him and his feels. After the bride makes her way down the aisle, I'll immediately get behind them so I can get some shots of her walking down the aisle, depending on how long the aisle is. I'll also get a couple of shots of maybe the groom standing there waiting for the bride before she's handed off by her parents. This is a great time to wait for hugs. There will always be hugs or kisses or something at this point in time. So make sure you're ready for those shots. You can see here I stayed close to the front and took these with the 23 since everyone's hugging at the same time. Now at this point, I basically start hanging out and taking nice shots of everything that's happening. Big tip for your ceremonies is make sure you're paying attention to the ceremony. Don't just zone out because now the officiant's talking and you're in the ceremony and everyone's kind of standing around. Make sure you're paying attention to what everyone is saying because that way you'll be able to tell when there's a motion about to show. I step back, sit in the middle, take a couple of shots with my 35 and 23, and then at that point I back up, take a wide shot, and then start changing my lenses up. So when I change my lenses, I'll change my 35 f2 to the 56 f1.2. I really love the way the 56 looks during the ceremony. It also gives me a nice distance so I don't have to be too close to the front. But on the same end, I don't mind being close. Unless for some reason the wedding tells me that I cannot be close, I'm going to get as close as I can without being in the way. So I love this holdfast bag that I'm using on my back. It makes it extremely easy to switch my lenses and keep all my gear on me. Make sure to check out my video about this bag because it's super awesome. So again, pay attention to what's being said and look for emotion. That's the main part you're going to be doing during the ceremony. For any close-up shots, I just pull in a little bit closer and get some nice tight atmospheric photos of them holding hands or something of that sort. For my second photographer at this point, I basically tell them they can do whatever they want to. Just focus on the couple and things happening during the ceremony. So they're going to grab things like parents and guests and alternate angles of the couple together that I may not be getting since I'm dead center. After I've gotten enough shots with the 23F2, 
I typically switch that over to the 16 f 2.8. I'll take one nice big wide shot with my widest lens. And then what I'm going to use this for is when they process out, I'll be able to get shots of them walking towards me with the 16 f 2.8. So you get a nice wide shot. You can see all the guests and you can see them kind of cheering themselves on that they just got married. Once you start nearing the end of the ceremony, make sure you're ready for the first kiss. Sometimes in some ceremonies, they come out of nowhere. So that's why I like to stick towards the middle so that if it comes up, I can catch it. My second photographer is running around grabbing different and alternate shots. And I'm in the center taking safety shots, getting shots of them, exchanging rings, exchanging vows, and being prepared for the first kiss. For the first kiss shot, I back up and get a nice, tight, but full body shot of their first kiss. I typically use the 56 f1.2 for this, and when the first kiss happens, I go to high shutter and I literally just hold down the shutter. Another cool part of doing this is that I can get a nice gif that I can give them of their first kiss. So now it's time to process out. Yet again, I push up nice and close on them, use my widest lens, the 16 f 2.8, go into zone focus, continuous autofocus, and take shots of them walking out. This way I get a nice wide shot, it includes the guests, and you can see them nearly full body. After that, I'll typically just follow the couple. They're usually in their fields, they're having a good time, they're celebrating, and just get some nice candid shots of them enjoying each other right after getting married. A lot of times their bridal party will follow along and then you'll get shots of them all together kind of hanging out, congratulating the couple, and just some nice candid shots of their reactions. So you'll see here I'm hanging out in the back with my 56 to get some candid shots of them reacting with their guests. So the ceremony is all done now and this is probably one of the most crucial parts of the day. Immediately after your ceremony, you're gonna wanna get family portraits. Make sure you get the family portraits here. If you're doing a traditional day, usually this is when the cocktail hour happens and you do family portraits, couple portraits, and maybe the bridal party. On a first look day, you're also doing that stuff, but the couple portraits aren't as important because you already have some portraits. So it saves you some time to kind of split up your portraits. I'm not gonna be showing the family photos in this video, but I do have footage of it, which I will be sharing on Patreon. With that footage, I'm also gonna share how I like to collect all the names for the family photos to make them go extremely smooth because one part of the day that's gonna eat up all of the time is your family photos. Make sure you have a process for the family photos and I will be sharing that stuff on Patreon. So we just finished up the family photos and now it's time for the bridal party. Keep in mind, I took the groomsmen and the bridesmaids separately, so all I really need is one big group shot of everyone together. All right, it's cold, so let's do this quick. If you're dropping your drinks, drop them back here by me. Oh. <laughs> Keep the bouquets about the same height. We make the V this time. Yeah, we yeah, have the V. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We'll do that in a moment. Let's line up straight. Guys, hands in pockets. Ladies, bouquets about the same height, so you have to come down a little bit. Shorter folks, come up just a tad. Uh, at the end, come up just a bit, and then y'all three all together, the taller ones come down. Here. Not, no, not yet, but PK. Guys, scoot in nice and tight. Keep that line straight, nice and tight. There it is. We're gonna do this quick so y'all can warm up, but first, everyone take a step to the left. Right there, good. Eyes at me. Everyone give me a big cheer, yeah! yeah! 
Give me a silly pose. Three, two, one, go. Change it. Three, two, one, go. One more time. Three, two, one, go. Y'all want to make a V? Yeah. Marke yeah. Michaela, come here. Come all the way up to me. Next two, beside them. But like back here. No, everyone straight. Yep, exactly straight to me. Uh, Markel, Michaela, just take a tiny, tiny, tiny right there. Right over left. Right over left. There it is, perfect, perfect, good. So, Michaela, Markel, first look at me. Yeah, everyone look at me. Michaela and Markel look at each other. Guys look out that way. Ladies look out this way. And then Markel and Michaela kiss. Perfect. Bridesmaids, excuse me, y'all done. Go eat, go drink. After the bridal party portraits, we go ahead and go into the couple portraits. Since I took some earlier in the first look, I only need a couple of portraits of them and want to free up their time for the cocktail hour. Oh yeah. So there's a lot of wonky shadowing happening. So what we're gonna do, Michaela, you are perfect like that. Scoot over into Markel, just right there. And you scoot closer to her. Um, don't hold her around the stomach. But you can put an arm, like you can hold her arms or something, and you just kind of, yeah. Huh. Yeah. And at first, I want y'all both to just turn your faces over towards the light a bit. I know you won't be able to see, so if you want to, you can close your eyes at first, and then maybe we'll open it for two seconds. I know the sun's like right there beating down on you, but. So since I already took some portraits during the first look section, basically what I'm looking for is just a couple more settings to get some portraits of them together. Also during this time, I'll be taking portraits of them separately. Okay, we're gonna open eyes. Ready, three, two, one. Okay, now look over at me. Let's not stare at the sun. Uh, try to bring your heads close. Markel, you don't come down to her at this way because you're like to the side. So she'll just come over to you a little bit. And you can almost like look down over at her. Yeah and then look over towards him, just, just the tiniest bit. Yeah. Whenever you're doing portraits with your couples, you should have already established a pretty well working relationship with them. Make sure that before your wedding day that you're actually establishing a relationship with your couple. Meet with them multiple times, not just one time before you're about to book them. Make sure they know who you are and what your approach is, especially if you have an engagement session with them together. And consistently send them emails so that they are in the know of how their wedding day is gonna go down. This will make your portraits much more comfortable and it won't feel awkward taking the photos. That is the hugest tip I have for you all when getting nice portraits of your couple. I know you wanna focus on things like lighting and lenses and cameras, but relationship is first and foremost when it comes to taking comfortable portraits. Here's a small handful of the solo shots we took of each of them separately as well. I usually take about five minutes for these photos and they're still together while I'm taking them. So I'll have the other spouse hype each other up so you get nice candid laughs and smiles in some of the photos. So at this point, we had one of the hotel workers come and let us know that they couldn't have their drinks on the floor because they had put them like somewhere on the ground. But then he also was like, yo, y'all wanna come take some pictures on the roof? And we were hype. And we get up there and honestly, the roof wasn't that good looking. <laughs> but we made do. Basically on the roof, I didn't like this wall that they had up. You couldn't really see anything. So me and my second photographer went ahead and took some shots and I took a very low shot using the 16F 2.8. What I ended up doing is my second photographer was using a prism, which gave some pretty cool shots. 
So I took some of her shots and one of my main shots and merged them together and also added some extra effects to get this photo. Now I did some couple porches at this point and we thought we had some time to save and gave the couple about 30 minutes to go to cocktail hour, but someone messed up the timeline somewhere and we saw everybody congregating over to the reception area, which meant the reception was about to start. This was the absolute worst because it did not give me a moment to actually get the detail shots. So now we're starting on the reception room details. And I mean, we ran up there as quick as we could and pulled off these shots in less than five minutes. And you have to be able to do that. If you see the guests going to reception and you haven't gotten your detail shots yet, you gotta make some magic because they're gonna take up all the space and you won't be able to get your shots. So here we are rushing to get the reception room details. I always start out with a nice wide shot of the full room. And yet again, since the guests were coming up, I had to get that as soon as possible. I use my 16 F 2.8 for that. Then after the wide shot, I switch over to my 35 for close-ups of all the details. Typically you only need like one or two tables. You don't need to shoot every single table unless they have some kind of special details on each one separately. So pick a table with a nice number, shoot a couple details on it, shoot some close-ups, and then move on to other things. After I get some of the tables, I head over to the cake and grab my cake shots real quick. Make sure you get your cake shots early because a lot of times guests will come over and they'll want to take shots of it as well and they'll get in your way. This part of the day, you're gonna wanna find a place to put down your bag if you have an extra bag with you. You see here, I find a nice safe spot close to the DJ because if someone's gonna steal your stuff, they're not gonna do it when it's close over by the DJ. After you find a spot for your bag, just continue grabbing any detail shots you can find. So guest seating area, any signs, just anything. And a lot of times I actually like to take these photos with the guest congregating around them because it kind of shows the action. And my second photographer did a great job also doubling up on all these details for me. Once we're all done with that, I usually take a moment to situate all my gear, make sure I'm ready for the reception, and also back up some of my data. If you haven't seen my video on the Narbox, definitely check that out on the channel. But the Narbox is basically a portable backup device and I can back up all of my SD cards right on site at the wedding. With this, I can get my second photographer's footage without having to worry about keeping their SD cards. I just download it all and then I have it on my little hard drive and I can import when I get back home. I also back up my own data and this way I can import everything at one time. So now it's time to start the reception with the intros. We're gonna be introing the bridal party and also the couple. For this, I'm using my widest lens, the 16 f 2.8. And while they're coming in, I'm using zone autofocus with continuous autofocus. For my flash, I have it pointed straight up and with the mag sphere on it, it's gonna to bounce toward them and also off the ceiling as well. Power is typically around 1 32nd because I'm gonna be fairly close to my subject since I'm using such a wide lens. I follow them as they come in and I'm on high shutter so I can get a lot of shots of the action. This also reduces the amount of shots I might miss because of focus. Since I'm using on-camera flash, I typically push my ISO up just a little bit to fill in the ambiance of the room lighting. I'll usually sit around ISO 800 or 1000. With a couple introing, it's going to be the same setup. Just make sure to watch out for your surroundings while you're following the couple in. Always be aware of what's around you so you don't run into a guest or trip over something. Generally after the intro, this will lead right into their first dance. You're gonna see the bridal party leave the dance floor and then we'll start with our first dance. I'm also lighting this the same way, on camera flash with the mag sphere as my modifier. And generally I'm shooting fairly wide. I have my 35 F2 and my 16 F2.8 is still on my other camera. 
Sometimes I'll switch that to the 23, but this time I just decided to keep it on there. So for your first dance, you're just going to kind of hang around the floor. I do like to be generally close to my couple, but I know some photographers like to stand outside of the dance floor and take longer shots. The main reason I don't like to use longer focal lengths is if your couple is going to do any spinning or dipping, it's hard to line up those shots and compose them well when you don't know when they're going to happen. Whereas when you're shooting wider, if a dip comes out of nowhere, it's easier to catch that stuff. Make sure to keep an eye on your backgrounds as well. A lot of times guests are going to want to stand up and take videos of the first dance, which is fine, but sometimes they get a little too close and kind of ruin the shots. So I will let guests know to move out of the way depending on where they are to make sure I can get the cleanest shots possible for the most part. There are going to be sections where you take a shot towards everybody and you have the guests in the background and that's fine. It's when they get up and get into an area where there's not a lot of guests, where it really gets in the way. Directly after your first dance, you typically have your parent dances. These are gonna be lit the same way. The biggest difference here is make sure to focus on the emotion. Typically your bride or groom are gonna get very emotional with their mother or father. And those are the main shots that I really wanna focus on during this time. I'm shooting this basically the same way. The nice way about shooting everything like this is there's not a lot that I have to change up. I have my flash on my camera, the flash is set, the lighting looks good, and not much is going to change. I also know that I don't have to worry about where my flash is placed and if they end up moving somewhere different since I'm using on-camera flash. Also again, at the end of the dance, make sure to always catch the hug. There's always going to be a nice hug at the end of the dance. Make sure you grab those. A new trend I've been seeing at weddings recently is mother-daughter dances, which I think is really cool. Especially stereotypically, the mother's putting in the most work with the kids anyway, so why can't the mother also dance with her daughter? So this was really awesome to be able to take these photos as well. I approach these the same way as a father-daughter dance. Another big tip for your parent dances is make sure to pay attention to the rest of the room as well. The other parent and or bride or groom are going to be in their fields as well and it's a great time to catch some candidates of stuff that's also happening around the room. Sometimes these parent dances can be a little slow. You're not going to want to take a thousand photos of someone just dancing. So take your main shots and then also pay attention to what's happening around the room. I was able to grab this great shot of the grandmother and the bride hanging out while the mother-son dance was going on. Next up on a reception formalities, as I like to call them, are your speeches. Speeches are pretty straightforward. Basically what I do is I use my 56 f 1.2 and just kind of stand back and listen to the speech. I'll get a couple of shots of the speech giver and then mainly focus on the couple. 
During this section of the day, I'm focusing on the couple and their reactions. Try and find any shots of them laughing or smiling at each other or smiling at the speech giver. Also, if the speech giver starts tearing up or getting in their feels, make sure to catch those photos as well. But typically, you're going to be focusing on the couple and any of their reactions. As far as my camera settings, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm at around ISO 800 to 1000 to get the ambiance of the room. And my flash is about at 1 32nd power. And I'm usually around F2, maybe a little bit lower with the 56 F1.2. Shutter speed tends to stay around 1 60th of a second. That way I don't get any motion blur when people are moving. And again, like with the ceremony, make sure you don't just zone out. Make sure you're listening to the speeches because that's gonna cue you when the good photos are gonna happen. Don't just be shooting randomly. Don't just spray and pray. Listen to the speech and you'll know when the moments are going to happen. And the number one biggest tip with your speeches is always wait for the hug. After the speech giver is done, they usually walk up to the couple for a hug. So stay focused on your couple and wait for that moment. Do not miss it. So before we get into all the dancing, it's time for the cake cut. The cake cut can actually be kind of hectic, so make sure you're communicating with everyone. You see here, I'm talking to the venue coordinators, letting them know where I want the cake. Unfortunately, I couldn't really move it anywhere else. Those windows behind it aren't the best option, especially while using flash. We're rearranging the table just a bit so it's a nicer photo and I can get them together. And also there's people in the background outside so I'm letting the guests know to move out of the way for the photos. Once I get everything set up the way I want it to, I let my couple to know, give me one nice smiling photo at the camera and then they can just cut it like normally. I'm typically gonna be using a wider lens for this. This time I had to use my 16 f 2.8 because I was very close to the cake and there was a table right behind me, so there just wasn't any space. My flash settings are basically the same, and I go to high shutter speed and just kind of shoot while they cut it to get some nice funny photos of them kind of struggling with the cake and having fun together. After that, I reposition just a little bit to capture when they eat the cake. I just want to get a little bit closer and not focus on the cake so much in the photo. Then I'm just shooting this while they're having fun and feeding it to each other and making sure I catch the kiss that usually happens at the end of a cake cut. And now we're on to the party. So I have a really awesome video that I already made talking about how I handle reception and everyone dancing. Make sure to check that out in the link above. But basically my flash is still on camera. I'm using the same settings and I switch to my widest lens so I can get on the dance floor with everyone, dance with them so I don't make them feel awkward and really get nice interactions with everyone on the dance floor dancing. I typically don't do the standing outside of the dance floor taking photo shots. I really like the nice wide in their photos because it really makes you feel like a part of the party. 
I'm basically just trying to find whoever's having the most fun and showing the most facial expressions and grabbing those photos. And for the whole night, I'm just kind of hanging out, taking photos. Don't take too many. Make sure to take breaks. Go get yourself water and just have a great time. Your guests will see if you're having a good time and if you're enjoying it, and they'll notice if you're just standing around and you don't care about anything. You can even check out most of my reviews on The Knot, and everyone absolutely loves the fact that I'm out there with their guests and dancing with them and kind of keeping the party live. So don't think you have to just stand on the outside of the dance floor and act quote unquote professional. Keep in mind what makes you professional is how you talk to your clients, how you deliver their photos, how you edit their photos, and how you treat them overall. Just because you have a little bit of fun does not mean you're not doing your job. You can make it a part of your job as well. And I just wanna give you a different perspective on that. I'm not hating on any other photographers. If you do wanna to be totally clean cut and straight laced, you can do that as well. Just make it a part of your brand so that your couples know what they're getting and what they're hiring. All right, so the party's all done. It's the end of the night. It's like 10, 10.30, and now it's time for an exit. So a lot of weddings, what they'll do is like a sparkler exit or something, but this time they chose to do confetti. So one big difference between a sparkler exit and confetti is that the sparklers can last for a little bit of time. Usually they'll have like, I don't know, 12 inch sparklers. So you have a couple of minutes to get that shot. You can go back and forth, but with confetti, they throw it once and that's it. So what you're gonna see here is me really controlling the group. I want a controlled shot. I know this may not seem like it's the nicest for the couple and you wanna have a moment, but if you want the picture, which is all they will have left after the wedding day, make sure that if this is the only way you can get the shot, just do it. Everyone was extremely cooperative and the couple loved their photos afterwards. So again, everybody listen up. Everybody listen up. Do not throw it until I count it off. I will go three, two, one, throw. Do not throw it before then. Three, two, one, then throw. So everybody off the stairs, when, when they come through, close this hole. So all y'all here, close this hole after they come through. Uh, yeah, because I'm gonna it's gonna be controlled. I'm not gonna like walk them through and stuff. Alright, yeah, good. Come on. Because like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop y'all in the middle because it's gonna make for a better photo. Don't throw! Don't throw! Nobody don't throw! Throwing. Don't throw! Come on in. Wait! Wait! Talk to you. Yeah, don't. Do not throw. You're gonna get covered if you stay there. Don't throw it. Keep coming, keep coming. Yeah, close the hole. Come closer to them. Y'all stop there. So yeah, y'all hold each other. You can dip, you can kiss. Ready? Three, two, one. And that is a full 10 hour wedding day. I hope you all had fun watching the video and you learned a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more full wedding days and like it so that everyone can see this. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it around for anyone who wants to learn more about wedding photography. There's links in the description below of all the gear I used in this video. Make sure to check out anything you're interested in. And if you have questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Also, don't forget about Skillshare. The first 500 people to sign up get two free months of a premium membership. Thanks again, you all, for hanging out on the channel. I put a lot of love in this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget about all the exclusive content I'm gonna be putting up on the Patreon page from this wedding day. Stick around for more full wedding day videos, creative entrepreneurship videos, and tech. And I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.